Hello, shop callers. Thank you for stopping in. Thank you for taking a few minutes to sit and listen to this little introduction of how I envision the shop caller podcast evolving. Um, I envision us all going on a journey together. I'll be on that journey with you. As a, um, a woman who spent nearly all of her career in the banking industry, I didn't envision myself to actually sort of become a teacher, which I, I think is unfolding before us. The Shop Caller podcast is a ethos, really, looking to, at the surface, empower women, but truly, we need to empower everybody. And the topic of money is almost inextricably linked to every other part of your life. It's really difficult to take away money from the conversation whenever um, it's something significant. Um, and even when it's not something significant, uh, you're thinking about your children, maybe your children's college education, you want the best for them. Uh, you think about the neighborhood that you're living in. You think about going on a holiday. Um, you think about perhaps leaving, leaving a bad relationship. Money is a thread that weaves through all the fabric of our life. And I hope that we will perhaps redefine um, how you have a relationship with money uh, so that we can maybe unpeel the mystery, give you the confidence that you need, as well as the context that you need, and give you just that extra bit of encouragement that it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter what your current situation is, you can take control, you can live the life that you wanna live, and you can be whatever you want to be at the risk of sounding, um, yeah, overly optimistic. I can't, I'm an optimist, and I believe in you, and I believe in this journey, and I believe that together we can, we can do amazing things for this planet, for other women that are marginalized around society, and, um, and for our children, our boys and our girls, our girls and our boys. Um, giving them the space to become the great people that we know that they can be, giving them uh, financial confidence so that they can leave a bad job, leave a bad marriage, start a business, um, become uh, environmental activists, whatever it is. Um, let's redefine our relationship with money so that we can redefine our relationship with the world, redefine our relationship with ourselves. So at the surface, yes, this is um, a podcast and an ecosystem that will spend quite a bit of time around the topic of investments, around the topic of financial confidence, but it's a lot more than that. And um, we will actually spend some time looking at the behavioral science side of this, um, this topic, because unless you're you're good inside, unless you're really good inside, it's going to be hard to address all of those other things that you need to address because sometimes, in some instances, for some of you listening right now, your journey, you might be looking to uh, get more knowledgeable on investments, understand um, where your vulnerabilities might be, and that may cause a difficult conversation with you and your family, perhaps your partner, is the one that always does it. Perhaps you're going to have to overcome some obstacles on why you now want to get involved. And these are difficult conversations. And I, I hope that we can guide you with that as well. We will regularly be posting on things like that, on topics like that, difficult conversations, because some of you are not um, free to have those conversations. And we want to support you and help you. Um, wherever in the world, if you look at the economic health of an economy, wherever women are marginalized and they, are, they don't have a voice, the economies suffer. So ladies and gentlemen watching, women, when they are integrated properly into society and they have a voice and they have an economic uh, impact, you thrive, you all thrive. So where did my journey begin? If you need to get a cup of coffee, I'll wait. I've got my nice healthy tea and um, maybe eventually I'll have a glass of Prosecco. Maybe we'll be celebrating something.
but go ahead, push that pause button and I'll wait. I need just a few more minutes of your time. My journey started, um, I would say when my mother left my father. I was around five years old and we had to leave under rather stressful circumstances. My father actually took um, my brother hostage and um, we had to leave under, let's just say, extreme duress. We drove across several states from North Dakota to Oregon and my mother had to start over from nothing. And fortunately she had parents there who were willing to support her while she got back on her feet and support not just economically, but emotionally. Um, and she had to get custody of her, uh, her son, my brother, um, in, this was mid 1970s, um, in Oregon and in North Dakota. So in those days, um, it, which actually isn't that long ago, uh, women didn't have uh, an easy time of it to um, stand on their own with children or even with credit um, or, you know, getting a bank loan. So we've come a long ways. Um, I was raised by a mother who did put her children first, who gave up a lot, sacrificed a lot, um, was, um, you know, lived paycheck to paycheck. And uh, her, her greatest contribution to me, other than keeping me safe and, and um, cared for, was giving me the constant mantra that I could do whatever I wanted to do, but I had to work for it. And I had to probably excel in school. Um, I say probably because I think the world's moved on a little bit from success equating to having a four-year college degree. I think that um, if I could short the US college education um, system, I would personally do that. I don't think everybody needs to go spend a hundred grand on a university education um, to be successful. It's a topic for another day, but that's that's a side point. Getting educated, however, is important um, in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I believe in that, and she believed in that. So I did. I went on and I got a college education, and I started working in the banking industry. Um, in in creating Shot Caller, I decided to do a bit of research, um, understanding the context. And I started to do a little bit of speaking as well, uh, talking to women about, um, yeah, financial uh, education investments. As I was doing a bit of research, I realized that there was one really big historical moment for women in getting into the workplace and staying there and getting, well, first of all, getting into a uh, university or some sort of advanced education after high school and then getting in and staying in the workplace. And this is crucial because um, I don't think we make the connection uh, often enough or loud enough. In 1961, the US government approved the birth control pill um, for use as a contraceptive. It had been allowed for other uses um, leading up to that, but up until then, it was actually illegal for a woman to have birth control in 30 states and by the US federal government. So that's a whole other discussion. That also wasn't very long ago. But I think that you need to know that if you don't already, and we need to tell our daughters that, and our sons as well. Once that happened, women had control over when they wanted to start a family. Now, this is not a debate on whether women, um, on the abortion topic, okay? This is a, a purely a matter of when we choose to have a family is up to us, and hopefully the partner that you want to have a, um, a child with. In any case, we could then finish university. We could then get into the workplace. And the workforce participation rate went from about 34% in the 1960s to over 60% by the year 2000. This was phenomenal. But what didn't happen over that time, what hasn't really changed is the conversations we're having in the home with our daughters around money and investments. If you happen to be a lucky woman whose parents talked about this with you, or you saw your mother taking a role, or your father invited you into the conversation, or an aunt or an uncle, or whoever it was that was in charge of your upbringing, then you have no issues with this. You think that you are just as capable as the next person. But if you didn't see your mother uh, playing a role, if you saw your mother doing the day-to-day -day budgeting, if she was planning household expenses, which by the way, women are tremendous, tremendous at, and we do it all day long, every single day. 
But what we don't do is get involved in long-term financial planning. And this creates vulnerability. And uh, eliminating vulnerability for women is a big part of this podcast. And it needs to it needs to involve men as well. It needs to involve society. Culturally, we've got to start having these conversations much younger. And we need to um, remove the stigma because too many women, educated women, women with PhDs, really, really smart women, think they 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 can't do this. And we see it a lot. I've seen it a lot. There's studies that have been done that up to 70% of women in America and close in the UK still abdicate their long-term financial planning to a partner. And this is just too high because we know, unfortunately, that we live in a society where more than 50% of our relationships are going to end in divorce. Um, and then um, there's also the tragedy of widowhood. And whether you're a young widow or whether you're an older widow, you don't want to be in a situation where during your grief, you are vulnerable to other people giving you advice that, that may or may not be the right type of advice or um, just just making bad decisions for yourself because you just don't have that um, confidence. So we're going to give you historical context. We are going to um, inspire you with the future, what's coming, so you don't just understand what a stock is and what's an index and what is systematic risk, but we're going to, I hope, reframe how you see the world. And when you look at where you're spending your money, you're going to think, wow, is that an industry I should be investing in? Should I look into that a bit more? Maybe if I'm spending my money here, there's more people spending their money here like me. Is that something that I should be investing in? We are going to um, talk about what's happening in the future. We're going to talk a little bit about robotics, about artificial intelligence, and maybe hopefully demystify some of these things as well. We'll talk about um, healthcare, um, uh, neural links. Um, there's a lot of exciting things coming, but there's also things we need to be aware of for ourselves and for our children. We'll talk about sustainability. We'll talk about impact. We'll talk about how you can be an activist with your wallet and with your investment dollars. And you have so much more power than you think that you have. And I hope that I can sh shine a light on that. Um, so in short, we are probably going to touch every part of your life because money touches every part of your life. And I hope that I can bring you fascinating stories from women who have started businesses or who have left bad marriages and, and, and gone on to thrive, who have gone out there to help other people, um, who have uh, come up with new scientific theories. Uh, we're going we're gonna to hear from a lot of different people, a lot of inspiring people. And um, of course, I welcome your, your feedback as well. Um, in my journey um, to the Shot Caller podcast, I do a lot of reading and I'm also on a personal growth journey and uh, there's a lot we will discover uh, together in this, in this journey. But lately, I've become aware of this amazing writer called Glennon Doyle, somehow new to me or relatively new to me. I don't think new to the world. I think I, um, I don't know what I've been doing, but I, I missed out. Anyway, I am reading her new book, Untamed. I'm not being paid for this. I just love it. Um, and I came across a wonderful poem that she's gotten here. Um, and I just want to read it to you. The small woman builds cages for everyone she knows. While the sage who has to duck her head when the moon is low keeps dropping keys all night long for the beautiful, rowdy prisoners. I hope that I can drop keys all over for all of you and that we can together unlock whatever cage you might be in, whether it's just a lack of financial confidence or whether it's a lot more serious than that. And together we can celebrate our rowdiness, celebrate our uniqueness, and celebrate this beautiful planet and all the opportunities that are out there for us and our families. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for spending about 15 minutes of your time with me. I look forward to sharing more stories, to talking about these, these um, sometimes sensitive but really important topics and hearing from you, hearing your feedback. 
and um, we'll be also hosting courses. We've started already with the um, tween and the teen stock market fundamentals course. I'm shortly going to uh, launch a course for women. It's just going to be, this This one will just be for women um, so that we can have a bit of a, a safe spot for them to ask questions in comfort. Um, I'll be doing a venture capital, basic venture capital course so people understand the terminology behind venture capital because that's a love of mine and um, sustainability, activism, engagement. We're going to do some small and longer courses on all these topics. So um, you have uh, lots more options than just listening to the podcast, but listen to the podcast. We would be super grateful if you would share it, share it with your grandmother, share it with your mom, share it with your sister, your aunt, your brother, your cousins, your children. Um, we want to get out there, get this message out there all over the world. And um, we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much and have a great day.